Uh, all right, last one from the practice quiz. Um, this is, of course, more integration by parts. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm sure you guys have this memorized by now, but just as a reference, I'll, I'll put our formula back up. Right, the integral of u dv is going to be u times v minus the integral of v du. Um, and this is an interesting one, right? This is where we have, um, you know, an e and sort of a trig function, right? E and then sine. And what we've sort of said here is uh, both of those would make good dvs, um, is kind of the suggestion. Um, what happened last time we did this in, in the, the videos for the chapters, we got this sort of infinite loop happening where you kind of just almost were running in circles and then you had to kind of actually use that to your advantage. Um, so as far as, as picking a U and, and picking a, a DV here, um, what I'm gonna do is, in theory, you could do either. You could have E to the 4X be U or be part of the DV. You could have sine be U or have sine be um, part of the DV. Either works. Um, the, the one thing I'll say is with the 4X up top, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna include that in the U. So that way I'm taking a derivative of, of this where we have the sort of chain rule rather than sort of needing this implied kind of U sub. So let's just say that e to the four x is my U and then my sine x dx is dv. So if U is e to the four x, then my derivative, right, du dx would be e to the four x times the derivative, right, would be times four. So du is going to be 4 e to the 4x dx. All right, half of what I need. My dv, this is, you know, maybe the nicest version of dv, DV we've had of these examples. Just a nice sine, sine of x. So my antiderivative there, right, would be negative cosine, negative cosine of x. And again, you know, the reason I like that is just I don't have to fool around with the, the extra four that I get here. Not that there's, you know, anything wrong with that. You know, if I, if I flip these and I had my dv was e to the 4x, you know, your antiderivative would, would be e to the 4x times 1 fourth rather than times four, right, if you're, if you're running it in reverse. In any event, uh, so what do we got? So this is gonna equal, so um, u times v, so e to the four x times negative cosine x minus negative cosine x times du, which is four e to the four x dx. Okay, so then cleaned up just a little bit, right? This is like negative e to the 4x cosine x, right? Negative, negative e plus. I'll bring the four out in front, integral cosine x e to the 4x dx. So this is definitely uh, a, a two rounder, a two rounder, right? We're, we're not able to really do this any better than we were able to do the original. Um, and let's keep that same kind of format going. Let's do e to the 4x is my u, and let's do right, cosine x dx is my dv. So this is round two. Uh, I'll shake this up. All right. So u is e to the 4x again, so that means du is gonna be four e to the 4x dx, right? I'm, I'm jumping a step there a little bit just because we already did that, right? Here it is, I'm gonna end up in the exact same spot, right? I'm kind of repeating myself. dv is gonna look pretty similar cosine x dx, right? So then my v is the antiderivative. The antiderivative for cosine of x uh, would be what? Positive sine of x. So my v value here is sine of x. All right. So carry this stuff down, right? So this will be 
negative e to the 4x cosine x plus 4 times. So then I'll lay everything out in here. So u is e to the 4x times my v, which is positive sine of x minus, right, the integral of sine of x times uh, my u, or I'm sorry, times my du, right, which was 4 e to the 4x dx. Did I? Oh boy, how much of that did you guys miss? Not a ton. Right, so there's my round two, u times v minus integral v du. Um, let's take a minute and clean it up. Um, and because I'm sneaky and I know what to expect, what's happening here, right, with these sort of infinite loops is, is more or less you kind of end up with something that's the same kind of format as where you started. So in this case, by the time we get to the second round, we're back at this sort of integral of sine x times uh, 4e to the 4x. That's rearranged a little bit, but, but that's very, very similar to what we had here, right? With the 4 and the sort of everything's just rearranged. So recall, right, the original version, our integral here, uh, e to the 4x sine x dx, right? That's where we started. So then that should be equal to, so this is minus e to the 4x times cosine x. Distribution here, we'll clean this up, right? So plus four e to the 4x sine x um, minus four times four. So that'll actually be minus a 16 integral of e to the 4x sine x dx. So the key, right, the whole thing that this kind of hinges on is recognizing that this term, once it's kind of re-cleaned re up and sort of rewritten, matches exactly with this. And so this is kind of one integral equals this plus this minus 16 of the same. So if I add 16 of the integral to both sides, that means I jump from one to 17, the integral e to the 4x sine x dx, right? All I'm doing is adding this over. I've, I've turned this from a calculus problem essentially into an algebra problem where the, the sort of, uh, you know, x, the kind of value that I'm trying to solve for is, is not just an x, but it's this whole integral, right? It, it's, it's, you know, it's sort of this, it's, you kind of go old school on it, I guess, right? You're just like, all right, I'm just not gonna get there using this um, integration technique. The integration by parts is kind of just sending me in circles, but it gives you just enough information, right? that you can find um, this guy. You can kind of find a way to solve for it as if it were an algebra thing. So if this is 17 times the original, what would the answer here be? And, and you just say, well, all I need to do right is then divide by 17, right? So these will just both get divided by 17. So the answer here, right? So your, your original version, e to the four x, sine x dx, so it's, you know, negative one over 17 e to the four x cosine x plus four over 17 e to the four x sine x. I mean, that's all legit, right? I mean, we, we did that all through our usual stuff. Um, and then it's an antiderivative, and, and even though it feels like we didn't really earn it, <laughs> we need a plus c on the end. So we'll just kind of throw it on there and that's the move, right? So I, I always like that. I, I like stuff that's clever, and, and that in particular feels like a nice sort of clever move, uh, a way to sort of think think laterally, right? Sort of uh, like you're trying to solve a riddle or something, um, meaning you're, you're kind of 
taking something and, and, and sort of looking at it from a different perspective, you're kind of attacking from the side rather than just going head on kind of over and over and over again. You know, if we just tried the same thing here over and over and over again, you're just gonna be looped forever to sort of uh, going back and forth between a handful of different uh, integrals. It's just, it's not really gonna get you anywhere, right? Because you're just going in a circle. So if we come at it from the side, and they're not where, they're, where this problem's not expecting it, if we can do that and come at it sideways and, and get an answer from, from sort of a slightly different technique, uh, that'll work. Hey, Thomas. Thomas the cat, still, still going for that bird. I know. It's like you're, you're trying to tell me you didn't have any breakfast. You want bird for breakfast. But I know there's breakfast. There's lots of kibble in the bowl. Nothing to worry about. Anyway, so that's uh, Practice Quiz 4 from me and Thomas. Uh, those are the solutions. Happy studying. We'll go from there.